sheep shearing. I learned that um, there's only four sheep shearers in here and they always have to go around the Galway. Patrick can shear um, around 120 sheep. I learned that when the sheep are being sheared, they're not actually hurting them. And when they mask, they're look, either looking for their mom, their babies, or, and they're in a, a different place. <laughs> Today I asked the sheep shearer how how did they know which sheep was which and they had to spray in them but when they shear them they know because they have different scents the sheep and they know by the cry of their lamb. I learned that are, there are different breeds of sheep and the different breeds have better quality of fleece and that nowadays fleece when they're brought to the market are only 40 cent when they used to be up to like 8 euro. I really liked when Patrick came to our school today and showed us how to shear the sheep. Today we did shear, sheep shearing and I learned that in the olden days they didn't have all the electric things we had now, nowadays. And it could have taken them half an hour to do one sheep and nowadays it only takes a, a minute and a half because we have all electric shearers and that cut it, that cut it better than hand shears. It's really cool the way that the sheep actually likes being sheared and they sat down and really liked it. Fado, fado. About 5,000 years ago, people started keeping sheep in Ireland. And then they figured out that they actually, there were different uses for sheep, isn't it? So what, what else do we use sheep for? For the meat, for the wool, to keep warm, and they even use the milk. So all sorts of reasons why people started farming sheep in Ireland. And keeping sheep, to, for the wool was a really, really big business long ago in Ireland, not, not anymore. But there's many, many, many different types. Because people started breeding sheep, didn't they? They started getting into changing the way they look and make, make them produce more meat. So we have black sheep, we have sheep with brown and white, or we have like this, this type of sheep that have really curly hair, so that depends on what region in the world, you get different type of sheep, isn't it? Yes. And Ireland, though, Ireland was an amazing place for sheep school. And where Ireland was famous for their sheep school in the whole of Europe for hundreds of years. Why do you think Ireland was so famous for its wool? I think that Ireland was so famous for its wool because um, it rains a lot and that helps the grass grow and grass is part of, of the sheep's diet. So it gets, gets better quality of the wool. Yeah, and the climate is a big part of it too. Um, the better the climate, the better the sheep's fleece will be. And they don't just provide wool, they provide milk and cheese and meat. Learning about fleece. Susanna came to our school to teach us about the story of wool. She brought, she brought in different fleeces from different breeds of sheep. Some were white, some were brown and black. 
Has everyone ever seen a sheep before? Yeah. But has anyone ever catched a sheep before? Yeah. Yeah? So it's not when you catch oh, yeah. the, the wool, would you call it a fur? No. No. Because it doesn't feel like a dog's fur, does it? It's not a fur, it's a fleece. Right? And when you look at your piece of fleece, when you when you do you notice that you can actually stretch it. It smells terrible. Why? Is that it? It smells like fur. Learning about carding the wool. Once the wool is shorn off the sheep, it is ready to be scoured, which removes dirt and lanolin. Lanolin is a waterproof grease that keeps the fleece dry. After it is scoured, it is ready to be carded or brushed. There are two ways of doing this. One, with a drum carder, which you spin with a handle. It has two wheels with small spikes on it, and it stretches out the wool. When it is finished, you have to cut it off. The other way of doing this is with a carding brush, which uses the same spikes as the drum powder. So you have your wool onto one side of this, and you place your other brush on top of this, and you comb this around. This will make the wool a lot straighter. Learning how to spin wool with a drop spindle. Drop spinning uses a spindle and a whirl. A whirl is a type of weight. Using some carded fleece, you spin the spindle, which twists the wool and helps the fibre to stick together and become stronger. This makes the yarn. I'm going to show you how to, how to make yarn from a drop spindle. So you have your spindle, make sure this part of the bottom can come off. You should have your string at the top. Put your wool on, which I've done. And you hold it here, and you might need someone else to do this for you. You can spin it. And when you're spinning, these are kind of feed it into it. And then if the other person is there with you, get him to and stop to keep on doing it. Okay. Good. And just keep on repeating that. I learned that you can get a stick and a piece of wood and cut carved into a circle and put a hole in the middle and you can spin it around and it makes wool. Using a spinning wheel. You can also make yarn by spinning wool. Using a spinning wheel, you will use you use your foot to power the spinning wheel. It is much faster than using the drop spindle. So we have a big wheel going around and a small wheel going around and the small wheel, how can it go around? If there's no pedal on it, yes. Because the string is connected. Exactly, so there's a band connecting it and the, the big wheel pushes the small wheel around. Do you notice that? So that's a good idea, isn't it? We can sell some thread and have some more money. And if we don't have a job to go, because there weren't any jobs, we can just work at home making thread. I can see it. Can you see the white thread? Oh, they're around, they're around, they're around. So it goes here, through, and there's my white thread on the bobbin. <laughs> Now you can see what's happening. The pedal is close. Can you notice how the wires are there? See if you can go the other way around. 
Pacifica Tank. Gold. Gold. This way. Ah. You can go two ways around. Okay. 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 Okay.
With our pieces finished, we started the felting process. We placed another piece of bubble wrap on top with bubbles facing down. We poured soapy water on top to help us rub easily. Using a circular motion with the palms of our hands, we rubbed the piece of for about 15 minutes to, until the fiber stuck together. Next, we squeezed the water. We put the felt into a towel and we rolled it 30 times. We left it for a couple of days until our felt piece was ready. Sewing. I'm gonna teach you how to thread um, a needle and tie a knot. You get some thread, you fold it in half or wet it to make it easier, put it through the needle and then when it's a quarter of the way you fold it down and then at the bottom you tie a knot, you get a loop around your finger and put um, the rest of the thread in there and pull it so it's a knot and that's for when you Oh, Together, everybody now ready. Take your needle in your hand the way you would use it as if it was a pencil. Ready? Have you all got that? Yeah. Needle ready, pencil case ready. And now we're going to do this. We're going to go, we go dive in from the back and come out at the front on the bottom left corner. So from the back, come out at the front and just stick a needle in there, hold it up by the eye and the threads and then just pull, 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 pull. Pull it until the knot stops it from pulling through. Wet felting ladybirds. I'm gonna tell you how to make a, a wet felted ladybird. First you get your felt and then you get some wool and tease it out and put it on your felt. And then you get more and then you put little dots to make the flowers. And then you get make your ladybird body and then you make its head and put on the spots and the line down the middle and then you get um bubble wrap and you put the you put your ladybird on the bubble wrap and put hot water and washing up liquid in the bubble wrap and you rub it and then you take it up and and um, then you um, squeeze it out into a basin and then you leave it to dry. lion mask. For this project we learned how to make lions out of wool. The first step you want to get bubble wrap and place it on the table with the bubbles facing up. Next pull one half of it off the table. Make sure it doesn't fall off the table. Now get any colour of wool this will be the back of your lion and place it into in a circle on the bubble wrap. Then get strips of yellow and whip them apart and tease them out into small little pieces. 
like like this. Then, if you want to, you can just do that with other colors. Now, you have to, in the middle, you should have a small bit where your back is facing out. Get a gold and place it in that there. Then, get white and place it for the muzzle. And then you place the nose with black. Now, you need to make the base of the eyes, this part. You have to put it on your fingers and pull it out like this. You have to do that with two. Now you get yellow, put them in a circle, and then put them into the base. Now you get the pupils. You just get very small strips of black and put them like this onto your line. So you put on the whiskers, then you soak it with hot water on it. Then you turn over that half of bubble wrap that was half the table with the bubbles facing down. Then you place soapy water on it and rub it around until it is it has small little circles into it. Now you wring it out into a basin and you can dry it. And that should be it. It should end up looking like this. d felting. Today I'm going to show you how to make a fleece pot. You will need some coloured wool, a balloon and hot soapy water. First you blow up a balloon to the size of a large orange. Then you choose your base layer. I chose white and you wrap your balloon with the wool until it is completely covered. Using the hot soapy water to help it stick, next you roll the balloon on bubble wrap with more soapy water. You keep rolling it for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the base layer is felted. Now you can design your own pot with your own pattern or design using other colors and roll it with hot soapy water, again to help the fibers stick together. Weaving. As part of the project, we learned how to weave. We made um, a loom using cardboard from cereal box and string. We used different. We used string and went over and under and over and under and we, and we and we turned and did the same thing. You can keep doing. You keep doing that till it till you have wool all the way and when you're done you cut it off and you tie knots here at the end and you get a, you get a stick and tie it on the on to the weaving and you tie it onto a wall. Reflecting on the project. My favorite part of the project was when we did the felting. Hi, my name is Sirsha. My favorite bit was doing the sewing when we finished the, when we finished the felting. It was really fun. My favorite part about the project was when we got to make pencil cases out of wool. I learned that you can make anything from your heart's desire with wool. And my favorite part of the wool project was mainly making the pencil cases. My favorite part of the project was watching the sheep being sheared because I have I had never seen it before. My favorite part of the project was when we got to felt our lion mask. Hi, I'm Hannah, and my favorite part was doing the felting because we were able to use hot water and you got to rub it, and it felt really nice to like massage it. My favorite part was the weaving. Uh, so first of all, you had to bring in a weave bit like a cereal box and then you had to like cut, cut it into a square 
and then we tied string like wool around it and then we weaved uh, different pieces of wool through it and then we ended up with a lovely piece.